it's cold out here. It's probably like 38 degrees. We got our first snow of the season last night. Mixed with some rain. Had a little dusting here this morning. It's kind of interesting. And our first real snow is about to get here tonight. We're supposed to get about four inches, three to four inches, something like that. This is the earliest snowfall I think I've ever experienced in Kansas City. Being out here, you know, 10 plus years which is crazy so hopefully that doesn't mean we're in store for a brutal winter So the concept of this uh, watering bucket is, I'm sure some of y'all have seen this, but you got these little nipples. The yellow spot is supposed to look like a piece of feed or corn, I guess. When they peck it, I'll show you. The water comes out, just trickles out real slow. For some reason, I've thought, here, let me shut the water off. For some reason, when I was using this thing before, I couldn't see how I pull it up this way and lots of water comes up. But when you push it down, I don't think a whole lot of water comes out. So we'll see how it does. I wanted to try it out one more time because if I could get it to work, it'd be pretty cool. Save a bunch of water just leaking and falling out everywhere. Anyway, let's go take it up with the chickens. So it looks like they're using it. Um, obviously, I don't, you know, the issue isn't whether they're gonna find water, they always find water if you set it out for them. The problem is, are they gonna be able to figure out to peck that little yellow thing and is enough water gonna come out for them to uh, be able to, you know, get enough water, especially the little chicks. The other thing that's happening is since we're getting snow tomorrow, the temperatures are gonna be dropping. So I gotta get the, uh, we have a little metal base heater and I got to get that thing up here which means I got to get electricity out here um, if you have any suggestions on how to keep water for your chickens from freezing I mean I assume people that you know have a lot of land I mean they can't stretch electrical cables everywhere so there's got to be another solution for that uh, maybe it's something solar or something anyway if you have a suggestion on what I should do about that instead of let run an electrical cable up here uh, leave it in the comments below. I would be very appreciative of that. Um, but, so we'll see how they would do with this. One thing that this does solve as well is that since my land is such a slope right here, um, it solves, you know, having to prop up the, what we were using the metal bucket, having to prop up that metal bucket on the side that's sloped with sticks so that it lays level and the water doesn't continually just spill out of the side. So, that solves that. Let's see how they do with it. I'll give them just today. I'll come back and look this evening and see if they've uh, emptied out all the water and if they're getting more. And if it's working out, then we'll keep it. And I'll, um, I'll find a metal bucket, put those in a metal bucket so when I use the base heater, it works instead of heating up plastic, which, you know, I don't like to do. The other thing I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna move the coop again. 
we're almost to the end of the run obviously the end of the runs behind me right here coop is here so we'll move it one more length and then the next move we're gonna have to take all the fencing and move it all the way up and we'll get it near that tree we'll probably go around you know you know do a wide area around the tree in front of the tree and uh, that will be the next position they're moving to I'll show you the kind of the grass here obviously they got into some areas you know chickens are kind of like pigs they got into these areas all of this over here is just scratched grass and that's what they do and so you know for being on here I don't know for being on here you know a month so far uh, it looks pretty good I mean they haven't destroyed the ground like they were doing in the other area obviously because they were kept there for so long but this is the area where they kind of moved up this is where they started or the coop started and then I just moved it on up and it looks pretty good but today we'll give it that last final move before we move the fencing and everything so let's go ahead and do that they've already drank the water out of there and there and there and they're not coming back for more because they're confused I don't know if this thing's actually gonna work if you've used these little pecky things before and they work just tell me what I'm doing wrong I don't know what's wrong with it uh, let's see here I mean they would do kind of like this action So I guess I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll give them some time to figure it out, I guess. All right, I am gonna be working on the skid steer the hydraulic cylinder today obviously it's gone i cleaned it all up put everything back together and i moved it back to the greenhouse there's the aftermath of junk back there and right here so that's out of the way but right now i have to fix the hydraulic cylinder like i was talking about so i got my seals in the mail and I am in the middle of taking it apart so let me show you what I'm doing so I got the cylinder and a vise typically you need like a um, tool for this but I'm not using a tool it's really easy to get off I'm just using a um, big old wrench to take this thing off a big pipe wrench to take it off so let's get this top off here and then once we get the top off, I will, a bunch of oil is going to pour out of here. I got a bucket down here to catch it. Um, once we get that off, then I'll show you what I'm going to do next with the seals over here. The one thing you got to make sure you don't do is you got to line this up really good. Make sure you don't hit this piston because if you mar the piston, you got to end up fixing that whole piston. Getting the junk out of it basically getting any scars you put in it out so just I'll just do this pretty gently I can turn this thing on my hands now I got it loose enough it's tilted in the vise like this so that when I pull the piston out it's gonna hopefully most of the oil will fall in there let that bleed out Go ahead and take it out of here. Got all the oil pretty much drained out. Piston looks good. There's no marks or burrs on it. You don't want any dust or anything falling in here. I'm in the basement, so I don't want anything getting inside of that. Um, so let me show you the piston over here. This is the piston end. What I got is a um, seal kit from Kit King. I actually ordered this one off Amazon. They sell on Amazon. 
Um, I'll put a link in the description below. But basically what you have to do is there's a bolt right here or a nut right here that's got to come off. When this nut comes off, this comes off and then this whole um, seal down here comes off all the way this way. And then inside of here are seals and inside of here are seals. Obviously there's some on the outside as well. Some on the outside here, some odd rings. Um, but now that I get everything apart, I have to um, replace those seals. And there's a special tool that you use to replace the inner seal on one of those. And it, it basically scrunches the seal up into a, with three prongs, it scrunches the seal up into a ball so you can get it in there. Otherwise, it's nearly impossible to get in there. That is coming in the mail tomorrow. So I will pick up this project when I get that tool. Uh, for now, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up, make sure this work area over here is dust free and clean, and we will continue this project tomorrow. Okay, so I got the piston taken apart. Um, this nut was nearly impossible to get off. <clears throat> I switched over to my phone to record this because it's a little bit easier in the tight confines that I'm working in. So this nut was on the end here and man it was hard to get off. I actually had to borrow my buddies in Milwaukee. If you don't know anything about this Milwaukee, this Milwaukee uh, half inch impact hammer is amazing. It's the only impact hammer that goes up to 1400 that I know of that goes up to 1400 foot pounds and it turns out that this nut is specked out to go on at about 1200 foot pounds so this is what I needed to take it off this is the only thing that would have worked to take it off I don't even know if air tools would have gotten that high so anyway <clears throat> I got that off good to go so now I'm taking these seals apart I already took these two off and now I'm going to start taking this one apart. Actually, just think I found out where the seal failed at. See that little thing right there? On that part of the seal? That looks like it's broken. So that's probably the seal that failed. That interior seal. That yellowish looking one right there. So let's attack these easy ones first. This O-ring. And this orange flat one right here. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and take these off. Okay, got those two out. Simple. So this is the interior seal. This one was tricky to get out. I had to use a um, just a straight point tool to jab into the top part and then pry it, pry one end over. Whoa! It goes in like this. So if this is facing up then the bottom center lip goes down and it gets inserted like that. So that's out, set it aside over here. Now my last remaining seal is this top one. This one actually has a metal rim around it. it just sits right in there, just like that. And that is all of the seals. The way I got this one out was sitting in here like this and I knew it had a metal seal because I could look at the new one and I just took a flathead screwdriver popped it under there put it in the vise and then just pried up as hard as I could and it just popped it right out so this one I'll end up hammering back in the new one I'll just make sure it's flush I did notice there's looks like from previous just people messing with this thing there's some gouges in the edges so what I'll do is I'll just take um, some emery cloth and just knock those high spots down make sure when I'm putting the new one in it's gonna seat right for now I'm done with removing the seals now I know how everything goes okay so this is the tool that I was talking about came in the mail today it's a seal twister tool and I will show you exactly what it does because I'm going to take these seals. I'm going to start installing them back into the appropriate positions. So let's bust this thing open 
and look inside. So basically all this is, I think I'm going to be using this size right here. It's, it's, it has different sizes, small, medium, large, and extra large. It's got a pick underneath all this. And there we go right there. So I was using, I was trying to use the larger tool. This one works perfect. And that's how it is all cinched up. And then put it right into there and then let go. All right, that was extremely easy. I've been taking, I poured some uh, oil. This is 10W30 oil, poured it in here and I rubbed it around the seal before I put it in. <clears throat> but that was extremely easy. I mean, this tool, amazing. They're expensive, but it was well worth it. I heard this part right here could take up to, you know, a couple hours if you don't have the right tool. So anyway, that's in. That seal feels good. It looks good. Looks like it's set in there properly. I made sure I watched this video and went back and put it in the same way I took it out. So that's all good. So the next one we'll put in is <clears throat> this top one right here. And for this one, I'm just putting in a vise. Obviously, got it protected with this wood. Um, but this is the seal that needs to go in. I'm just making sure it's flush on there. And then I'll take a dead blow hammer and I'll just knock the top of it and get that in there. Okay. That was super simple. That one's in there. Now let's do these two. So what I'm going to do is in my kit, I'm going to make sure and compare the sizes. So when I put these on here, I'm not using a smaller size, which could possibly fit because, you know, the O-rings are really malleable. And so they can stretch. I just want to make sure I'm using the right ones for the right part. Okay, so that's done. And this whole piece is done. I know because I've finished with the ones that I set out over here. So this piece is done. Ready to go back on the piston here. So the next one we'll attack is this one. And this one's pretty easy. There's not much to this one. Okay, this one's on here. Surprisingly, this outer one right here was pretty tricky, this brownish looking one. And this is the new back seal here and it doesn't meet all the way around, which I think is fine because this green one didn't meet all the way around either. So anyway, I'm hoping this one lays a little bit more flush once it goes into the cylinder. It will find out pretty quickly here. So, all right, that's done. All the seals are on. For some reason, they gave me two extra seals. I don't know what that's all about. But <clears throat> that's it. Let's put it back on the piston and get everything back in the cylinder. It's all back together. I hand tightened this bolt down so that I made sure I didn't cross thread. Because if you cross thread with that beast of a drill over there, you're not ever getting that thing back off. And you're messing up your piston. So I think everything's ready to go. So I am going to go get the drill or go get the impact hammer. And I will hammer this thing on. The specs say anywhere from 1,200 to 1,400 foot-pounds. And that impact wrench goes up to 1,400 foot-pounds. So I'm just going to ring it on there pretty hard. Not like just sit on it, but sit on it for like two seconds and then come off of it. And that should be hard enough. All right. That's it. She is done. Got it all back together. Got the pin in. I think this is just a, it's like a stop nut so that if there's any kind of major force, it doesn't back this thing off because basically I, you screw this thing on. I mean, you saw the interior of this. This is what screws on to the end. So it's done and it's tight, man. I can't budge this piston. So I assume that's the way it's supposed to be. It was really hard to get in there. Hopefully this works out. I'm going to put it back on the uh, skid steer tomorrow. And I will show you all how it's working. Hopefully we have no leaks. And this thing's good to go. So that's it with the hydraulic cylinder rebuild. I got my... got my oil here. My HTO, HTO additive and my oil. 
So now what we're gonna do is we are going to put some hydraulic oil in it. It basically just takes 10W30 and then you have a little additive that you have to add in there, put in there. I got Mr. Bean in tow. Say hi, Mr. Bean. Say hi. Hi. I got Mr. Bean in tow because mom's out of town. Kids are watching the show and I figured I'd get this done real quick. So let me show you what I did with the hydraulic cylinder first. So we got the hydraulic cylinder on. It's really easy to take on and off. Uh, one thing I'm going to be looking for when I start everything back up is leaks from here and leaks from here. I want to make sure I tighten these up good enough. I didn't want to over tighten them. So I want to make sure those are good. I greased all of the points that I could grease, which is there, 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 and then same on this side. And then there's like three in the back at the pivot points. And then there's one here, but it won't take any grease because the grease um, nozzle thing is gone. So I need to get a, a grease tap for this end so that I can make sure that's all greased up. These are supposed to be greased every 10 hours. So that's the most greased part, obviously, uh, because it just goes up and down constantly. So um, what I'm going to do is now that I got the cylinder back together, I'm going to look for any sort of strain on the cylinder. And obviously, I'm going to look for any leaks. So let's hope that I got this thing sealed up right after I get the hydraulic fluid in. Let me show you what I'm doing there. I got Rotella T5. This is a Sin blend and it's just 10W30. Uh, and then this is the HDO additive. You can get this at any case dealership or case dealer or anywhere like that, tractor store or whatever. And this stuff is expensive. This is like $38 uh, dollars a quart. I mean, ridiculously expensive here. So one quart of HTO additive treats five gallons of oil, which that's pretty stinking good. This is one gallon, so we'll see how much this thing takes. I'm already on level ground here, so. Okay, so I added two gallons in. And now it's finally starting to show on the sight glass. Before I add the other two gallons, I'm going to go ahead and add the HTO additive to the tank and start this thing up um, and make sure that cylinder is actually working. Good news. I pulled the skid steer up here, ran it back and forth, tilted the bucket, and no leak on the cylinder. So. That's good. I think I do need to tighten this one up a bit. It looks like it's just leaking just a hair. So that's done. So now I'm going to go through with the grease gun here and I'm going to grease all the rest of my points.